A CTE and a subquery can serve the same purpose in a SQL query in most scenarios. They help us simplify complex logic in SQL queries. For example, let's say we have a scenario where we need to find the employees with the maximum salary. Now, this can be achieved by either using a CTE or a subquery. If you want to use a subquery, a subquery is a nested SQL statement. So you can see that the subquery is defined within these brackets over here, and then the main outer query is defined over this subquery which is going to use the results from the subquery so now in this sub uh, subquery we have used the rank aggregate function to create the order of all the employees based on their salary and then we are selecting the employee who ranks first in that order in terms of maximum salary so if we execute this query I'm going to get the results of all the employees within the department who have the maximum salary in that department now I can achieve the same using a CTE. So for a CTE, I'm just going to copy this subquery part over here and I'm going to define my CTE. Now a CTE is a named result set, which means a CTE has a name. So we just define a CTE using the with clause and then we give a name to the CTE. So let's say I want to give the name as CTE max cell, then we're going to define the CTE, so the CTE definition. I'm just going to copy my subquery over here as the CTE. Now I'm ready with my CTE. The only thing I need to do here now is select the data from this CTE that we just defined and apply my condition, whatever is my filter criteria. So we are max cell is equal to one. So if I execute this query, I should be getting the same results, which I'm getting, I'm getting the same results. So now what is the difference? The difference in terms of performance in the terms of how the logic is executed is no difference. No difference in this particular scenario. The only difference that you can see in terms of writing the SQL query or defining the SQL query is that this CD is a named query that is reusable. So you can, because just reference this query by this name and use it for different logic in your select statement. It also makes a SQL query writing more readable. So it's easier to understand the logic using the CTE. You just go inside the CTE and just then you just reference the CTE in a separate select statement by the CTE name. So it is easier to understand. It is more readable in terms of what the SQL is trying to do. Other than that, there's no difference in this scenario. But there are some scenarios in which you can use only a CTE or a subquery. So there are some unique features associated with the CTE as well as a subquery. So let's see what are those features. One unique feature associated with a CTE is that it can be recursive. A recursive CTE is one which references its own CTE, so own definition within the same CTE definition. So we are defining here the CTE called CTE underscore date and within the definition of that CTE, we are referencing the same CTE. These recursive CTEs help us to generate sequences in most cases, like sequence of numbers, sequence of dates, alphabets, etc. Now in this scenario, you can see that we're generating a sequence of dates. So we have defined the variables and this recursive CTE will generate the date values in separate rows which fall between these two particular dates. So if we just execute this you will see that we have got the records which have that particular date in it. So this is one unique feature of a CTE. On the other hand, a unique feature of subquery is the concept of correlated subqueries. A correlated subquery is one in which you can reference the outer table from within the subquery. So in this scenario, what we're doing is we are finding out all the departments from the employee table where none of the employees has a salary which is less than 30,000. So that is a scenario in this case. In these kind of negative scenarios, the correlated subqueries are very handy and in the, the syntax to write this query is simple where we can use the not exist keyword and then we're just finding out the department ID from our table where salary is less than 
30,000. So first of all, you're finding out all the departments where uh, an employee has a salary less than 30,000. And then we are going to find out all the departments from our outer table, which do not fall in this list of departments, which have an employee with salary less than 30,000. Now to achieve this, what we have done is we have referenced the same table inside, and then we have done a join so employee emp department id is a table from the subquery over here and employee department id is our outer table from the outer query over here so this can be referenced and you can perform a join on the department id and then you can get your output in terms of the correlated subquery now, if you look at this nested subquery statement, you will feel very confused. So you can understand that it is very difficult to read the statement and it is a little bit difficult to understand what exactly is happening over here. Now, what is happening over here is that first of all, in this subquery, we are finding out the average salary for each department and storing it in a name subquery by the name of T1. Then we have another query on top of this query. So these are nested subqueries because this subquery is based on this subquery, where in this outer subquery, we are finding out the, we are just finding out how many employees have the salary greater than 90% of the average salary in the department. So we are using a sum and case statement over here. So we are just summing up all the employees. We are doing a count. So this is a conditional count. That's why we are using a sum and case combination over here. And we are finding out all the departments who have at the end, at least two or more employees who have more than 90% of the average salary. Now you can see that it's very difficult to understand just by looking at the query, what is happening. Now, if you convert this into a CTE, then it will become more readable. So to convert that, first of all, let's start with the innermost subquery. So this is our innermost subquery and let's open a new window and just call it with T or average salary, CDE, average sal, because that is what we are going to calculate over here. And let's just put that subquery over here. So this becomes our CDE, one CDE. Now I'm going to define another CDE, which is going to use the results of this CDE. So when you need to define multiple CDEs, you just need to separate them by a comma. You do not need to use the with clause again. You just need to provide the other name. So this is CDE, let's see, employee count as, and then I'm going to use the outer, outer subquery that we had over here. So this is select, from right so i'm just going to go back and define this and then we are going to select from the cd that we just defined above which is going to be average salary so this is going to be my cd number two so now i've defined two cdes one is calculating the average salary for each department and in the other in the next cte i'm doing a count of employees who have a salary greater than 90 percent of the average salary in a department and now for the final results i just need to write a select statement selecting from my final cte here which is cte m count where okay this statement let's just put it down this is the variable we created over employee count where employee count is greater than equal to two now if execute this query it is going to give me the same results but you will observe that it's much more readable and it's easier to interpret than the subquery the nested subquery that we created Another use case of subquery is to filter your data in your SQL query. So a subquery can result in a list of values that can be used for filtering in your main SQL query. There are also various keywords that can be used with a subquery, like you can use any, all, exist, not exist, which are very handy and which are very useful in terms of filtering the data. For example, here we are going to use a keyword all. So our target is to find out all the employees who have a salary greater than 
all the salaries, all the employees of department ID 3. So here what I'm going to do in this subquery, I'm just going to find out all the department ID 3 salaries. So I got three values. There are three employees and they have these particular salaries. Now I want to find out all the employees in my main employee table whose salary is greater than all of these three values. So I can use the all keyword over here and I can just execute this query. So this can be a subquery and I can find my results. Now here I can also replace it by any and I can execute and I will have many more records. Now, any means that the salary of the employee should be greater than any of the values returned by this subquery. So if there are three values they were returned. And if anybody's salary is greater than either of those three values, then that employee's salary will be returned. So so looking at the examples, we can say that the subquery and CTE can often be used in place of each other, but there are certain scenarios in which each has to be used and there are certain differences which are summarized on the screen in front of you. I hope that you found this video useful and it helped you to understand the difference between the CTE and subquery. If you like this video, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.